Welcome to the third example from chapter 10. We're now in a new section of the chapter, uh, and so this is the first time that we're seeing some of these new ideas in action. This is the first time where we're going to calculate a moment of inertia on the whiteboard, and so it's worth re-watching this video if any aspect of it doesn't make sense, um, because it is one of the times where we're introducing these new ideas quantitatively. All right, so in this example, we have a um, dumbbell that has four kilograms on one side. It has three kilograms on the other. And it's being held in place to rotate around an axis. So we have these distances, 30 centimeters and 40 centimeters. that are the distances between the axis and one mass and the axis and the other mass. We are actively pushing on only the four kilogram mass over here with a force of 10 newtons. And we are asking to figure out what the angular acceleration of this object is gonna be. Okay, so this is basically holding it in place. It's gonna rotate. Um, this is a top-down view, so it's going to rotate around and around. And we're trying to figure out how quickly it speeds up, so the rate at which it speeds up. So the big tool that we're going to use to figure this out is that torque equals I times alpha, where tau here, torque, is equal to the moment of inertia, I, times the angular acceleration, alpha. So if this is the thing that we're trying to solve for, then that means that we should be able to get number values for each of these other two objects. So if we think back to chapter, uh, chapter 9, we know from chapter 9 that torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the distance to the axis. So we have our 10 Newton force, and that 10 Newton force is acting on this four kilogram mass. This is the perpendicular distance to the axis, the 30 centimeters. But we can't use centimeters in our problem solving. We have to divide by 100, so that's 0.3 meters. And so the torque here, 10 times 0.3, is 3 Newton meters. Okay, so that part is finished. We'll be able to plug it into this equation. Okay, so for the moment of inertia then, we want to think about the moment of inertia as this sum of all of the different masses times radius squared. And with two separate masses, that means we'll have two separate terms. So M1 R1 squared plus M2 R2 squared. So we have four times 0 0.3 and only the 0 0.3 is squared. As a reminder to us, this is also going to have to be converted to meters. So the three kilogram mass is 0.4, 0 0.4 away, and only that 0.4 is squared. So if we calculate those two, the first term, just so that we can see where they come from, the first term is 0.36, and the second term is 0.48. So we're going to have the sum of those two is 0 0.84 kilograms times meters squared. And this will go into this term here, the alpha, or the moment of inertia. So with these two now calculated, we can plug them in to this equation. So I'm gonna erase the equation itself up here uh, as big as it is so that we can see how those numbers get plugged in. So if torque equals I alpha, then the torque is three 3 newton meters. The moment of inertia is 0 0.84 kilograms times meters squared. And then we're looking for alpha. 
So we can divide everything by the 0.84 and the relevant units. And so what we will get is 3.57. And if you want to convince, this of, uh, convince yourself of this on your own, you're certainly welcome to. When we take the kilograms, meters squared, kilograms, meters squared, and we look at how all of, all of these units work together, newtons times meters on top, kilograms times meters squared on the bottom, and we go back and think about what newtons actually are, what we end up with is the units that we expected, plus radians show up in their magic kind of way, and we get 3.57 radians per second squared. So that last part, I'll get a little bit closer to the um, video. All right, so the key thing for some of these problems that are gonna be in this section of the chapter is that this is our key tool in the same way that F net equaled MA was our key tool from chapters four and five. We might have enough information to get two of the three of these with other equations, other smaller definitions, and then we plug them in to get the last unknown um, in the problem. So uh, as always, you can rewatch these videos as often as you need to, uh, and I will see you in the next one.